My name is Houston and welcome back to another video. I hope you're doing well. Had a good weekend. Good start to your week. Summer is like officially here in Seattle. It is just way too hot already. And I, I, yeah, I'm not built for this. I know it's been about a week and a half since the last video, but we are back and we have more crab gaming to do. Yeah. So back here on another crabs treasure. Mm hmm. So the castle got like infected or whatever. I haven't played this since the last video. I've just, I've been playing Paper Mario and I've just been busy doing other stuff like exercising a lot too much. I don't know what's up here, but I got to fight a couple of these guys to like get my mojo back. Stop playing games like this for like two seconds and you just immediately forget how. Oh no. All right, buddy. You're just going to camp that item up there. Oh no. He's going to kill me. He's going to kill me. We're off to a great start. We're off to a really, really great start. Oh my God. Oh my. All right, dude. All right, dude. So you just gotta take it slow and we'll be fine. It doesn't help that like all my keybinds are messed up because I'm using DS4. I don't even know if I need to use it, but yeah. I lost all my junk from the first time I died. So that's really cool. That's all you gotta do. You just gotta do a charged attack. Easy game. But yeah, you may be wondering by the title of this video what I'm talking about. And really, it has to do with something that I was thinking about late last week. And, and I know that this thing isn't just in the fitness community, but I'm gonna use it as an example. There's this trend that I see a lot of, um, specifically with uh, what's called hybrid athleticism. So basically what a hybrid athlete is, is somebody who both lifts and runs a lot. And a lot of people have this idea about runners where, I mean, you could look at the NCAA championships right now or like just pro runners and you can see how they're generally very skinny because they don't have a lot of muscle mass on them. A couple years ago, this trend of hybrid athleticism really picked up and it's pretty self-explanatory. It's like, oh, okay, well, you know, you lift a lot of weights, so you retain a pretty good amount of muscle mass and you also can run like pretty fast marathons or just fast in general. And with that trend and the proliferation of content and how it's created these days, there are a lot of people who make videos that are something like a uh, POV, you tell me I can't run and lift at the same time. One, like nobody's saying that. No, literally nobody is saying that. <laughs> I mean, it's actually probably good for runners to lift a little bit more just because, um, I mean, muscle mass is a great indicator of longevity. And remember, I'm bringing this up as an example because in a lot of communities and just with content in general, there are so many people who go on the explore page for instance and they see a video and it's something that is the most basic nonsensical idea ever like oh yeah you know like POV something that nobody has ever said before <laughs> and they will see somebody making that video and then they'll be like hey yeah I am kind of similar to that so I'm going to make the same exact video. And to me, stuff like that just really makes a lot of the things on the internet really suck. And I'm not saying that one type of video should be limited to just one person or one creator or anything like that. And I'm also not saying that people should scour the internet for like some sort of uh, indicator that a type of video hasn't been made yet. What I am saying though, is that it's almost like we're a bunch of pigs at a trough and so much of the content on the internet isn't really substantive subs i think that's a word yeah isn't really full of a lot of substance it seems like so much of it is that bottom of the barrel slop it's being thrown inside the trough and then you know you're just throwing all this stuff out there hoping that somebody Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the shell's going on? Oh, there's one. What was I saying before I got brutally attacked by this man through a wall? It just feels like so much of the stuff that's being released is being released just for the sake of, like, it's content for the sake of content. Like, there's almost no original thought to it. And to me, as a viewer, I see that as the person making it as not caring. 
like i to me it seems like they they only want to do it for engagement they only want to do it for likes they just want to do it for clicks whatever we do have to fight the queen whoa whoa all right aldrich i'm gunked i'm gunked oh my god big damage i just need to i need to heal dude i dropped i dropped my my kelp pot or whatever the fuck it's called i think we're winning this one yeah all right anyway what i was saying was i feel like the power of the internet is that every single person can have a voice right but that's also at least it seems like that's a weakness in some way because there seem to be so many people that don't really know who they are it's not just that they don't know who they are they're just copying other people and so we end up with all this noise and it's hard to get like an actual signal in all the noise and it sucks too because it's amazing that so many people all around the world can have well each individual has their own experience and they have all these things that they can offer but so many people um instead of offering their own unique genuine perspective they fall victim to the psychological manipulation of the internet and they just want to talk about all the things that everybody else is talking about they just want to remake the same video over and over again that other people are making and yeah like that that makes me sad because w especially when you have a really big platform like it must feel so good to you know it must feel so good to actually be someone that says all these things that can also help people I feel like I'm kind of popping off this time. Okay, never mind. Oh my god, she's actually she's actually the she's the monk from some from Sekiro. No heals left. Kind of play this like an idiot. I might be able to win this if I'm patient. <laughs> oh, and a caveat as well, because I I can't forget to mention this because then I'll be a huge hypocrite. I fall victim to that stuff too. Like I'm not saying that I don't slurp up the slop in the trough next to all the other little piggies okay i totally fall victim to uh, like consuming this mindless brainless content too and and as someone who makes content themselves i'm not saying that what i'm doing is like all these leagues better than anybody else because that would just be ridiculous i don't really think i'm special in any way i'm just trying to say that i think that there are a lot of people out there they could probably be, I don't know, maybe using their platform to voice a more unique opinion instead of just spouting the same stuff that everybody else is. I'm almost gunked. I'm kind of going crazy right now, dude. I'm I'm now gunked, but she's gonna die because I'm insane at this game. She's not even gonna be able to go phase two because I'm gonna spin out of here. I'm gonna roll out of here and I'm gonna. Mat! I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just making noises. Damn, I went sicko mode right there. So I started training for my 50 miler uh, this past week. And I logged about 25 miles, 30 miles, something like that. And then I, I think I weight trained for like three hours. And I also went on a big hike yesterday, yesterday morning. Went on a hike in the morning and then had a family barbecue after. In like the last quarter mile of the hike, I walked off to the side of the trail to like let some people get by me. 
because you know i'm such a nice guy and when i was getting up the rock was slippery as hell and i stood up and i lost my footing slipped landed right on my ass like so there, there there's a bruise it's it's a very light bruise it luckily it, it, it's not too deep can bruises be deep i don't know um but yeah it's about this big it's like the size of my fist <laughs> it's just like right on my right ass cheek <laughs> the hike was cool though it's one that's that used to be really local to me when i lived further north uh of seattle like where i grew up but i haven't hiked it in i don't know like at least five years it's been it's been quite a long time i mean it really it's been quite a long time since i hiked anywhere if i remember correctly there are so many hikes here in the pacific northwest and especially with uh well we have the what the olympics on the peninsula and we have the cascades here um more on the on the eastern end of the water it's cool though getting back out there especially on a hike or just any really just going to a place where you haven't been in a really long time and having these like foggy memories of the place and then you finally get there and you know all these memories kind of start flooding into your head it's it's cool it's like i mean it's really like textbook nostalgia but it's a feeling that you actually get to go back to. It's not something that you only have the memory of. My girlfriend and I had that hike planned for uh, like two weeks or so, but I was supposed to, according to my training for the race in September, uh, go on a long run, like an hour and 20 minute long run at a zone two pace. Because we already had this hike plan, I was like, well, I can just do the hike but maybe like try and go a little bit harder so i can keep my heart rate in the proper zone and in order to do that i thought it'd be a really great idea to put a 30 pound ruck on my back <laughs> and let me tell you my shoulders they hurt i gotta say though it was a really good challenge i underestimated how heavy 30 extra pounds would be i know that probably sounds ridiculous but i was like oh you know like i'm pretty athletic like i can do 30 pounds but it wasn't necessarily the weight on my back that was tough it was mostly just the um like the the weight on my shoulders like just pushing down the whole entire time because we were hiking for like yeah about four hours i was like okay well four hours worth of a hike i knew it would take us more than an hour 20 like uh what the training prescribed but i did not think that it would take four hours <laughs> so me having an extra 30 pounds on my back uh hiking for four hours it was a yeah it was a really really great workout and the only reason that i had the idea of rucking or like a rucksack on my mind is because i had recently finished reading the comfort crisis by michael easter and i also subscribed to his newsletter the uh two percent newsletter and that name is derived from the fact that when there's an escalator or elevator available, only 2% of people, I guess, opt to take the stairs. And something like that is, is something that I really resonate with. I'm not really sure why. I think that sometimes I just like punishing myself. But it's also fun just trying to live in a more, um, I don't know. I don't think primal is the right word here. But uh I'm gonna die. Crab's gonna kill me. That's real primal. But yeah, there's something about um, maybe like avoiding all the comforts of modern day life every once in a while and opting to do the harder thing. One of the core tenets of two percenters, uh, according to Michael Easter, is, um, and this is like a community that he's created, is a uh, have fun don't die and i don't know yeah like i i really like that because it's like you know you should really go out there and work hard and put your body through rigorous test but you know obviously don't die right <laughs> it's actually interesting because before i ever read the comfort crisis or knew who michael easter was i'm a, I'm a big supporter of this app called waking up by uh it was founded by sam harris who out of Anybody in the world has had the easily had the most like just just the most insane influence on my life trajectory. Like, I don't think that I would be anywhere close to the person I am now if it wasn't for him and uh, his teachings. 
not only just like intellectual teachings, teachings that have to do with meditation, teachings that have to do with just overall mindfulness, uh, philosophy and well-being and finding a just basically finding a way of life, finding a way to live that is um, consistent with with my values. Oh, I'm going to die. That's not consistent with my values. We're supposed to have fun and not die, not die. But yeah, uh, Sam Harris helped found this app called Waking Up and it's a meditation and um, I mean, God, it's so much more than a meditation app. It's it's really like an, a well-being app. It is an app that has courses. It has conversations with teachers and um, just very smart and very well-rounded, level-headed people. Uh, from topics like Taoism to Stoicism to uh, just overall philosophy to theory of mind to consciousness, just just all these things, right? There's also, uh, and this was a later edition, but it's been on the app for a while, but there's a whole section called Life. And all of that stuff is a little bit less cerebral and it's more, it's less to do with like meditation directly and it's more to do with just well-being and like how you can be better in your own life and how um, certain teachings like in the teachings in that section can um, teach you how to exist in a way that is very likely much better than the way that you're already living. All, all of this to say that there's a section in there by Michael Easter that is about uh, the comfort crisis. And I'm pretty sure it's the book just distilled down into uh, short talks that are like all less than 10 minutes. But I, I listened to all of those way before I knew about the comfort crisis or just like who Michael Easter was and they really resonated with me. So, so I didn't look anything up about Michael Easter. <laughs> I, I instead forgot about it for a, for a while. And then one of my friends recommended that I read the comfort crisis and I'm like, Michael Easter, where does that name sound familiar? And, um, yeah, so I read that. And uh, it was around the time that he released uh, a new book called The Scarcity Mindset or Scarcity Brain. Yeah, Scarcity Brain. And I have yet to read that one, but I do have it. And if you thought for a moment that I'm sponsored by Waking Up or Sam or anything like that, I'm not. I don't have any sponsors. I would love to be sponsored by Waking Up because I, <laughs> I push it to people in my life all the time. <laughs> but uh, no, I just, I just really, really uh, love the mission statement and... My whole goal in the very beginning has always been to just um, do what I can to help uh, make people's lives better. So, you know, maybe maybe that's part of the influence from the app and uh, what I've learned over the years. And when I think about the app and what it's taught me, I feel like so much of uh, my opinions on things like uh, what I talked about at the beginning of this video, like being true to yourself and finding your authentic voice and being someone that isn't afraid to, you know, maybe get less engagement um, or very likely get less engagement at the cost of being authentic. A lot of that stuff comes from what I've learned over the years. At the end of the day, if you're not being yourself and you're not providing your own unique perspective, eventually that stuff's going to run out and you're not going to have yourself because you never were yourself. It seems like there's a lot of shallowness in the world masquerading as confidence. I appreciate you for listening. I got to hit the gym. It's my rest day from running, but uh, I don't want to turn into a twig, so I still got to go lift weights. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.